there is the natural world, and there is civilization. And at times, the two are juxtaposed together, with the common thread between them being us. Join us as we journey between the forest and the farmland, from streams to streets, and learn about how we can find balance and beauty in everyday life. It was on a late summer afternoon that we left town to go on a backpacking adventure at a lesser known park in Ohio. We were headed to a set of metro parks outside of Germantown, not far from Dayton. We had come here once before after our road trip in 2018, but this time we were back to document the adventure. pulled into the familiar parking lot and got ready for the trip. <laughs> now, with one car parked at the end of our trail, we headed to the start of our hike. We would be traversing across two metro parks during this trip for a total of about 13 miles. By the parking lot, spotted gnatweeds swayed in the wind while insects pollinated them. We hiked towards the trailhead and looked at the map as we reviewed our plan. We would be starting at Twin Creek Metro Park, hiking north to Germantown, where we would hike along a bike trail, before hiking and camping at Germantown Metro Park. Now, we headed onto the trail, excited to start the hike. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Ever since I saw the weather take a turn for the better, oh boy, all right. I'm excited for this trail, not only just because it's like probably going to be pretty easy, but also the fact that we're going from one park to another and going through a town, this should be really interesting. I love going through towns. Going through towns is like <laughs> so much fun. We're going to find a drugstore, get a Gatorade. Oh, <laughs> going to be urban archive. <laughs> As we hiked, we came across a chicory plant. So there's a plant here that's got these kind of lavender bluish looking petals. And it's in the same family as dandelions. And I often see this growing along the highway. It's a really beautiful thing that adds a lot of color to the environment around you. And you can actually eat the petals. They're really delicate and papery. Um, they almost like melt in your mouth, but they don't taste like too much. And then down here is a flower with some really unique looking petals. It's got this weird asymmetrical flower with these three like claw looking things coming out of it, and this is called Great Blue Lobelia. We continued hiking on the trail, which was wide, flat, and easy to hike. And there was even a nice bench not too far in. Room for one more! <laughs> Good bench. <laughs> We've hiked 0.2 miles. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the trail now took us through a big, sunny meadow. Here, we saw plants like autumn olive and ironweed. We also happened to run into a viewer named Mike. Easton, I'm Mike. He's my uh, year and a half. Uh, shout out to my wife, Erin. 
<laughs> so I feel like these sights and sounds are, are so iconic when it comes to like the late summer season. Right here we've got a thistle with these like thorny looking leaves and then these brilliant pink flowers. And actually thistles related to artichoke. You know artichokes, if you see them flower, they actually look a lot like this, just bigger. And then over there we have some teasel, which a lot of people confuse that for thistle because it's also kind of spiky. But yeah, whenever you see brown teasels like that, you know autumn's just around the corner. And finally, all throughout this meadow, all of the golden rods are starting to flower and these yellow flowers are starting to come out, which really gives that feeling of late summer and, and the beginning of autumn. Now, I've probably asked you this before, but are thistles edible? I think so, yeah. It, you'd have to obviously take all the thorns off, but um, I think you can eat some of the tender stalks. Is it, isn't it a thistle where you could like boil the leaves and parboil yeah. the leaves and eat them? Well, you can do that with nettles too. Oh, nettle, maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. But also the sounds are just amazing. Like, you can hear the distant cicadas and all the crickets and grasshoppers and stuff. We followed the path into the woods where we saw a sign pointing to an old Hopewell earthwork. So yeah, that little structure there, that slight raise in the ground, it was kind of like an enclosure and it probably led to like a gathering place where meetings or spiritual ceremonies were held. So it's not like a fortification for military reasons is just kind of a boundary for a gathering place. Up ahead was a junction with diverging paths forward. Okay, so what do you guys want to do? You want to walk along the river or do you want to cut through to see the Hopewell earthwork? Hopewell earthwork. This earthwork is actually a hilltop enclosure constructed nearly 2,000 years. Yeah, let's go check it out. Yeah, yeah. we're going to go to the river. We're going to be by the river other yeah. times. So it looks like the earthwork is this direction. It looks like the trail's purposely blocked. It's probably not it. The earthwork could be this mound here, like this little berm. I feel, they said this was a structure. And okay. I feel like there's gonna be a sign. <laughs> yeah, most likely. Yeah. Oh, yeah, maybe that was it. <laughs> Cause this is already another junction. I think, yeah, actually, if you look at the map, it's a long winding mound raised. raised oh, oh no. maybe we were just yeah. walking by it the whole time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess so. Okay. So that okay. mound, like even this mound right here, I think is part of it. Many earthworks and mounds are hard to spot today, as they often erode away and become grown over with vegetation. The trail now took us along a narrow ridge. From this vantage point, we had a view of a forested gulch below. We continued through the forest, now on what felt like a more traditional backpacking trail. Along the path was a strange landmark built from stone. Some sort of old well, I guess? It almost looks like a fire pit with that grill thing on top. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I thought at first. I was like, that's really random. But considering its proximity to this creek, almost certainly it was a well at one point. We continued through the woods, underneath canopies of pawpaw, catalpa, and maple trees. The trail took us to another junction, and there were many forks up ahead. So it depends on if we want to loop around or if we want to cut over here. So I, I say that we cut across here, but then we head over to this pond over there. Yeah, and then afterwards we can cut back um, from two to nine here back onto this trail. Cool. So many options. Yeah. We hiked on through a meadow, then back in the woods. Along the way, I saw an interesting plant on the forest floor. So all along these muddy hills, there's these leaves growing that look like these perfect like heart or spade shaped leaves. And this is actually called wild ginger. And I've actually dug up the roots of one of these once. It doesn't look like a ginger root, it's just a thin root. Um, and if you chew on it, it kind of has a gingery taste and it almost like makes your mouth kind of numb. It's like if you're eating a Sichuan peppercorn, it, it turns your tongue kind of numb. Wild ginger has been used as a spice in the past, but it does contain some poisonous compounds. <laughs> The path now ran adjacent to the Twin Creek, so we decided to explore by the water a bit. A rocky bank that went right up to the water's edge made it easier to look around. We 
admired the views of the creek, and I looked at some of the flora growing in the area. It's cool because when you get into like a riparian environment like this by the water, you see a bunch of other plants that you wouldn't normally see in the forest. There's these flowers called smartweed, which have these like pink flowers that to me, they always make me think of like nerds candies. And then there's also willow, which is a medicinal plant. That's actually the plant that is the basis for aspirin. And then here, look how huge these leaves are. This is a sycamore tree and the leaves are like as big as my head. But these are trees that tend to love the water. And I've also heard that you can tap them for fresh water if you're like in an emergency scenario, the same way that you might tap a maple tree. Also growing here were ditch stone crop and woodland sunflower. After exploring, we returned to the path where Andrew saw another plant. So there's also these shrubs growing nearby with these shiny green berries and some of them are beginning to turn red and this is called spice bush. Whenever these berries turn red that's always another sign of fall. You can use the leaves for tea but you can also take the berries themselves and crush them up and kind of use them like a black pepper type seasoning. It's very fragrant. And up ahead was a plant that I knew about. Okay so these yellow flowers here uh, is actually called touch me knots. That's the layman's term, but they actually do something really cool and unique when uh, the seed pods are gently touched, and you can kind of guess maybe what it is by the name Touch Me Not. Whoa! It was like vibrating in my hand. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's cool. Why does it do that? Uh, it's a seed dispersal method. So when it pops open, it kind of shoots the seeds off. And you can imagine like a deer brushing up against it. Yeah. <laughs> Another common name is jewelweed. You can use the juices in the stem to help with like skin ailments like poison ivy. There are also orange variations of the touch me not. Further on, I spotted some bellwort leaves, a destroying angel mushroom, an old paper wasp nest, white jelly fungus, American bell flower, and a little snail shell. A little further along, and we found ourselves at another junction. At this junction, we're gonna be heading this way, and that's gonna to go to a lake. I forget what it's called. Dogwood Pond. Looks like there's fishing there, so we may see people actually. Hopefully there's actually a decent amount of water in that pond. <laughs> So I'm also noticing in this junction, there's these pawpaw trees, and I am actually seeing some pawpaw fruits growing. This is actually perfect season for those, so I'm gonna shake these trees, and if they fall off, that means they're actually ripe enough to eat. Ready? Yeah. So maybe, let's try this one over here. Yeah, generally when they fall off, they are just ready to eat. Some people like them even more ripe. So there's no point in plucking these now and trying to eat them, because it wouldn't taste that good, but. Hopefully we'll see some more further on the trail. And of course, this is one of my favorite trees. And up ahead was another one of my favorites. So this is a rare sight. This is an ash tree that's actually grown pretty big. I don't know, maybe like a decade ago, a lot of ash trees got wiped out because of something called the emerald ash borer. And apparently this tree has been treated to get rid of that. But basically the bugs will like completely strip the tree from underneath the bark and kill it. That's why they don't want you moving firewood around, right? Yeah. yeah. This one's going strong though, that's surprising. Usually when I see ashes, they're just like saplings coming up. If you look just over here, there's another ash tree and you can see how all the bark has fallen off. And there's all these textures of little tunnels that have been dug out by the bugs. And that's what's happened to a lot of these ash trees. How did they get introduced into the environment? How'd they get overrun? I've heard various theories about how stuff like this happens. Like sometimes wooden pallets that are used to ship things will still have like eggs of bugs in them. So they'll go from one continent to another and get introduced. We hiked through the forest a bit longer and then the trail opened up into a field. The pond should be up on the left pretty soon here. This might be a good spot for a snack break, I'd say. Agreed.
comfy chair. Yeah. Is this supposed to recline or you think it's just loose? Probably loose. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice side effect. Yeah. I'm not sure I want to continue now. <laughs> oh. We just set up tents like right here. <laughs> There's a movie called uh, Kikujiro that's been very influential on us. And they kind of like go camping in this like half wild, half rural area. And I feel like that same feeling is what this is like right now. Yeah, it's really similar. We enjoyed the pond a little bit longer before deciding to head out and continue hiking. Just before the trail led us back into the woods, we appropriately found a dogwood tree growing nearby. As we hiked, we checked to see what the weather was looking like. Yeah. Expect occasional rain to begin at 4.30. We might be in trouble. The other problem is, is, based on the radar, if we try to wait out the rain, that's a big rain cloud. The weather said that it would keep raining for till like 10 or 11. So mm. we can't really wait that out. How heavy of rain are we expecting though? It's a big cloud. I don't think it's gonna be super heavy because it was mostly green and yellow, but that's still yeah. just gonna be constant rain. Okay. Hopefully, this forest gnome would give us better luck with the weather. In case it didn't though, we continued hiking through the forest as the sky became more and more overcast. The trail eventually led us out into another open section. Funny, it doesn't look nearly as imposing when you're out here. Yeah, it's so much brighter. Our turn should be coming up on the right really soon. This will take us back towards Twin Creek. Not too much longer now. Out here, we saw some old cicada shells clinging to a bush. We hiked along thickets of meadow plants like Queen Anne's lace, thistles, a variety of grasses, and this, ragweed, a plant whose pollen often causes allergic reactions in people. A plane flew overhead as we once again entered a section of forest. Not long after, we heard a flock of Canada geese flying overhead. We now reached another junction towards the north end of the Twin Creeks Metro Park. So once we get here, we're going up this way? Mm-hmm. Right. Ready. We neared the end of our hike in this Metro Park. The trail now treated us to a wooden boardwalk and stairs. These led to a gate with a field on the other side. And what TVT is? Twin Valley Trail. Oh. That's us. Oh, so we are going through here. Yep. We took a moment here to check the weather again. Whoa. Well, okay, so we just left Twin Creek Metro Park. We're gonna kind of go through town here, hopefully, and find that drugstore for some cold drinks. That would be a needed moral boost if it rains. <laughs> Out here in the field, we were met with a quiet calmness that made us forget for just a moment about the potential rain. And so, we continued on, hiking through the meadow along the Twin Creek. We had hiked a sizable distance so far, and it felt like the day was winding down. But as we approached Germantown, we realized that our journey was just beginning. We hiked towards civilization, walking past a farm with a few horses grazing in the grass. The trail forked up ahead, so we paused to get our bearings. My guess is under the bridge. Under the bridge? Sweet. There's even a hiking symbol there. Oh, yep. Yeah. Right there. I love stuff like this. <laughs> yeah, this is so great. <laughs> Trail follows road, next 1.1 miles, north on Sugar Street past Moraine Materials. Huh. 
Now in civilization, we followed the road to our next destination. Out here, the overcast sky started looking even more ominous than before. Those are probably the rain clouds, right? Looks like it. Right now we're walking northwest, and the clouds are coming from the west. All that, that it was like a weird fever dream. <laughs> <laughs> it really does feel like dreams, because often you have these dreams where you went camping, and then for some reason you stopped, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then you go back to civilization, and you're like, what am I doing here? Yeah, yeah. Now, the road forked off, with one path headed towards a residential area. Brian, it's us. What? You sure? I'm not sure, but that's what the sign says. Oh, okay. Going right through a neighborhood. Yeah. We're we'll basically going to be in a neighborhood for the next, like, 20 minutes. Wow. Didn't this kind of look like it was an old trail marker? Am I wrong? Although we were in civilization, we still couldn't escape the elements. Feeling the first droplets now. It's inevitable. Just like Thanos. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna get my rain, at least my pack cover on. The short jaunt through the neighborhood led us back to the main road. From here, we hiked past acres of farm fields. You guys know what these are fields of? Soybeans, right? Yeah, soybeans. They look colorful right now. Could we just pluck those and eat them like edamame? <laughs> <laughs> they might be hard and dry by now. <laughs> mm. The soybean field had an almost rainbow color with the yellows and greens of the leaves and an almost purplish hue from the dried up brown plants. And when you look closely, you can see hundreds of little soybean pods dangling from the plants. I love stuff like this where you go into civilization briefly and it's really weird, but I also feel like the novelty of it is wearing off pretty quickly. <laughs> and I'm like already ready to get back into the quiet woods. <laughs> it's really weird how much louder cars are when you're walking next to them than when you're inside them. They're not going that fast, but they seem like they're going really fast. Yeah. And it's really loud. Is it left, Brian? No, a little bit further. Oh, okay. We now officially entered Germantown. About half an hour outside of Dayton, this town was founded in 1804 and has a population of about 5,500 people. The road crossed over a river. In the distance was an old metal railway bridge. A light rain continued to fall when we found our way to the next section of the trail. Yep. We now got off the road and headed towards a bike path leading through Kircher Community Park. This is the best of both worlds, a paved path and the woods. <laughs> <laughs> From the bike path, we could see more farms and an old wooden structure. Kind of looks like an old-timey train station. Like you'd wait for the train to roll up right there. <laughs> this structure had been converted into a picnic area. We decided to stop here to get some rest and talk about the rest of our trail, including what we would indulge in when we were near some convenience stores and restaurants. We've got about two miles left till we get to the campsite. We'll probably get there right when the rain starts. <laughs> So on our way, Captain Nines, our post-hike meal, is just along the trail. We can get drinks, get food if we wanted to. Oh, what if we did that? What if we got a pizza and took it to our campsite? <laughs> I didn't carry the spaghetti for nothing, okay? <laughs> I'll dump the sauce on you. <laughs> what if we just got just dough, and they cooked the dough, and then we put the pizza sauce on Like a spaghetti pizza. <laughs> I 
just realized that we can each have our own table. You sit over there. <laughs> Look, I sit. Are we on? <laughs> Maximum airflow. <laughs> <laughs> We rested a bit longer under the wooden structure. A grasshopper kept us company while we milled about. Just outside, a giant ragweed plant grew along the fields of soybeans. Eventually, we packed up and headed out. So along the trail, there's these trees growing in it. Kinda looks like a walnut or uh, some ash tree or something like that from a distance or a sumac. But if you look closely under the leaves, there's these little glands or nodules. And what that tells me is that this is something called tree of heaven, which is actually an invasive tree from the continent of Asia. These are grown ornamentally. You see them growing in urban areas all over. This bike path is super nice, but this is gonna be a really long walk. I'd estimate we're like 20% of the way through the bike path now. And I think what's so painful is that you can see the end of it. <laughs> the path ahead meandered into a little wooded area where we saw a bench and a bunch of tiny figures under an old tree. We also saw a disc golf course adjacent to the trail. Frolf, Jerry. <laughs> golf with a frisbee. <laughs> How's everybody's energy levels right now? Pretty diminished. <laughs> severely diminished, is that what we said? Pretty diminished. Oh, but mine's severely. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we haven't hiked all that much, and we're on paved ground now, but for some reason. We haven't really eaten that much today. Yeah. It's been really hot. We've done six miles. That's more than we do lots of times in a single day. Mm -hmm. All signs point to we need to get some sodas. <laughs> <laughs> what are these horrible looking sacks on the trees? I believe they're for bagworms, which are these like caterpillars. And you'll see one's full of caterpillars. And if you blow on it, they all wriggle all at the same time. It's a pretty awful sight. <laughs> they're probably harmless, but yeah. The bike trail now took us along various parks with tennis courts baseball diamonds, and basketball hoops. Now I'm totally out of energy. <laughs> now, we crossed the street and came across a memorial for Arthur Huffer Jr., a World War II veteran from Germantown. We continued on the bike trail, and though it was easy hiking, our feet were starting to feel tired. Does anybody else feel like they can't go on? <laughs> I, I'm just trudging, man. It's like a different exhaustion than like a more strenuous hike, you know? Like my lungs are fine, but my legs feel like they're about to fall off. The biggest disadvantage to having to reserve a campsite, you can't just look for something and just be like, alright, this is it. So since we're right next to all this mowed grass, there's some plants that I recognize from like whenever I've been in yards. <laughs> but this is a mock strawberry and it's edible, although it kind of tastes like wet dust. <laughs> <laughs> Dry nothing. <laughs> oh no, wet nothing. <laughs> Pretty soon, there was some relief in sight. Okay, if my memory serves me correctly, there's some tables up here, and then off to the right is the gas station and our pizza place, which is our post-hike meal place. So maybe one of us can go get the drinks, the other one of us sit at the table and drink the drinks. <laughs> I, I can go get the drinks. <laughs> oh, there it is. It's not tables, it was a bench, must be. Mm. There's even corn growing here, although, I've heard that a lot of the corn that's grown is just for animal feed and like it's not good for human consumption. Yeah, heard that too. Yeah, so Captain Nine's Pizza is like right there, gas station right there. I'll have a sit right here. Yeah, Brian, why don't you sit with the bags? And then me and Andrew will go get the drinks. I certainly wasn't going to argue with that. I rested my feet and watched the gear while the others cut across to the gas station just off the path. Needless to say, this was a surreal moment in our hike. But as alluring as civilization and junk food can be, 
we were happy to get back to the bench, surrounded by fields and meadows. Now, it was time to indulge in our cold refreshments. Oh. Ding, 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 ding. 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 <laughs> Ah. Oh, Radioactive man. blue, my favorite flavor. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, we were like up in Michigan on a lake, and I discovered Nest tea, like sweetened tea, basically. Mm. And I was like, this is like soda, but not spicy. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, every time I taste it, it's very nostalgic. <laughs> spicy soda sounds like something you'd have in Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Well, that is not every trip. In fact, it's almost never that you get to have a cold drink mid-hike. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially when you really want one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You can always have it when you don't want it. Because <laughs> <laughs> the only time you wouldn't want one was when it's cold outside. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's weird that you hold it with your left hand, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> we headed back onto the path, which promptly led us back into the woods. The overgrown trail then led us under another bridge, which was a bit of a tight fit. Yeah, there was a sign that said, in case of high water, use the road. Exploring under the bridge made us feel like kids again, wandering around in places we weren't supposed to be. Wow. It's nice and quiet in here. After passing underneath, the trail took us to a wide open meadow, where we noticed the weather had changed for the worse. Yeah, it, it, that's actually raining a fair bit now. We put on our rain jackets and continued hiking the last part of today's trail. We were eager to settle into camp, and this last section felt much longer than it actually was. But before long, we had arrived. You see something? Yep, this should be it. Is that outhouse over there, looks like? Oh, yeah. Uh, hang food or something? We're on the farthest one. It looks like us. Yeah. Amps I see, baby. And none too soon. It sounds like the rain is picking up right now. Yep. Although it had started raining, it was still fairly light, and we were incredibly relieved to have reached our campsite. Now, we set up camp so that we could rest our weary feet and have some dinner. So this is a jerky made by shiitake mushrooms. And you can really smell the mushroom smell. So Rob sent these to us. No relation. <laughs> we all grew up eating like shiitake mushrooms in different foods. And this is like such a familiar smell. Let's see how it tastes though. This is uh, sea salt and thyme. It tastes like shiitake too. It's good. I actually like that a lot. That's really good. It has that shiitake aroma. It's got a nice shredded texture too. It's like, you know when you're a kid and you pretend that you're like eating chewing tobacco or some, or some weird thing like that? <laughs> What's on the menu tonight? Well, I've got some Parmesan cheese, big bag of pasta, some spaghetti sauce. Brought onions and green peppers to throw in that spaghetti sauce to give it a little extra kick. Uh, solid fuel provided by Expedition Research LLC, um, a supporter of ours, awesome people. The first step was to heat the spaghetti sauce. While it heated up, I mixed together the diced onions and peppers and mixed them into the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> so I cooked the pasta a tiny bit al dente with the expectation that we're gonna cook it a little more in the sauce here. So hopefully these will turn out just right. But even if so, they're totally edible. It's really good actually. As the spaghetti cooked, we could feel our spirits rising. This has kind of turned around actually from like an hour, an hour and a half ago. We were like kind of dreading the rain a little bit. We were exhausted. We're sitting here cooking up some spaghetti, <laughs> not getting wet yet. Praise Greedo. Yeah, you can hear the rain, but it's just yeah. the pitter patter on the leaves. It's really not that yeah. bad. Yeah, we're gonna eat good and have a good night's sleep. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> <That's gonna be laughs> awesome. <laughs> and to top things off, literally, we added Parmesan cheese. <laughs> We're each going to use a third of this. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Oh, Great man. idea, Brian. <laughs> mm. Mm. Excellent. Oh, man. Mm. The peppers mm. and onions do add a lot, actually. Mm. 
Fantastic. Yeah, I gotta get some of that pepper and onion on there. <laughs> it actually kind of tastes like pizza. <laughs> oh, that's good. Mm. The peppers and onions are like not fully cooked, but it actually is kind of nice. Mm -hmm. I think I like it better with the penne, actually. Like, it's more of the sauce. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's so good. Tastes very homemade in the best way possible. This is how I eat it with my chopsticks. <laughs> <laughs> it actually heated it up surprisingly well. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I was expecting it. for us to have to wait like for a while. I've been waiting for like a full real meal for so long. Mm. <laughs> it's nice because we even have like a pseudo camp plan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna sleep so good tonight. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, those onions are good. And green peppers. That wait was so worth it. Mm. So what made you think of cooking this? Actually, it was my mom's idea, but I think it was because we did the Mount LeConte commentary. And in that one, you talked about the spaghetti with the green peppers in it. Oh, yeah. So she was probably like, why not let, let Robbie relive that nostalgia? <laughs> <laughs> After dinner, we headed to our shelters for the night. How you guys doing? Doing pretty good. This is not bad at all. Yeah. Timing worked out perfectly, too. Yeah, it really did. rain suddenly got a bit heavier. It's a good thing I went to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, I'm regretting not going sooner. <laughs> I'm gonna have to wait this out. <laughs> we got pretty lucky with how the rain turned out. Like, it's true, it yeah. It was really manageable. I'm glad it didn't start any sooner. <laughs> oh man, I'm so ready to go to sleep. I know, I already feel tired. Yeah, I'm super tired. <laughs> All, right. All right, good night. The rain had fallen through the night, and the next morning was quiet and gray. In the sky above, the morning sun broke through the dissipating rain clouds. Relieved to hear the calm silence of the morning, we woke up, got out of our shelters, and started cooking breakfast. For today's breakfast, we had something special planned. As Robbie cooked, we heard something that sounded a bit too much like rain. <laughs> That's just wind. <laughs> With the first pancake cooked, it was time for a taste test. Oh, that was perfect. <laughs> oh man. Now that they were Andrew approved, I cooked up the rest of the pancakes. As the morning carried on, Brian was roused from his slumber. Now it was time to eat. Till it's cool, just cool. <laughs> wow, mm. it actually tastes like a pancake. Mm. Yeah, that, that turned out perfectly. It was good. It's the perfect chewy consistency too. It's like yeah. good flapjacks. <laughs> <laughs> when you guys eat pancakes normally, do you pour syrup on them <laughs> or do you dip them? I usually have syrup on the side and then I dip. Yeah, that's how I do it too. It was a lot of work though, I felt, felt like it was worth it. <laughs> I don't know. It's worth it for me. It was worth it for me, I just didn't do anything. <laughs> that made up for my terrible night of sleep. <clears throat> I must have flipped over 20 to 30 times really? through the night, just like every 30 minutes. I was actually flipping a lot too, but I didn't use my air mat, which was a foolish mistake. Yeah, I don't understand you, Andrew. I'm, not gonna, <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely using my air mat tonight. <laughs> well, you brought it and didn't use it? Yeah, yeah. I was comfortable <laughs> on my air mat, <laughs> as I always am, because I don't change anything. <laughs> oh, I already see some hints of blue in the sky. Looking forward to dryness. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to the afternoon when it gets really nice and comfortable. Yeah. Here's a question: Do we go back to the shell station to get? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> That hike from there to here was actually kind of a trudge, it felt like. Oh, yeah. It's probably just because we were tired, but it was 
Yeah. And we were like anticipating, and it was starting to rain. Probably a combination of things. Cool. Hey, I'm using the bathroom. <sighs> We packed up and checked out the rest of the campsite. Oh, but that is a common cooking area. Well, that's what you thought it was, so I guess that makes sense. Then we headed out, hiking north to Germantown Metro Park. through some thick brushy trail right now and there's some plants that have these like compound looking leaves and some of these are honeysuckle which is an invasive shrub that grows in a lot of midwestern forests but this is actually ash the same tree we saw yesterday but these are obviously like new saplings coming up and you can see they're oppositely growing and they have these bigger compound leaves but it's nice to see that this this tree that was kind of taken out by this emerald ash borer is coming back so here's another tree that i actually don't often find in the wild uh, but this is called redbud it's a native tree that's in the pea family. Um, you can actually see it's got some pea pods here. But in the springtime, these trees are just so beautiful because they have these bright pink flowers that grow all along the branches and the, the, the twigs and stuff. And you can eat the flowers. You can eat these, although they're kind of tough, so you'd probably have to like prepare them. And I think the leaves, when they're younger, you can kind of pick those and eat them as well. We also saw some bone set plants, which have traditionally been used to treat fevers and colds. And we saw some false turkey tail mushrooms. The trail continued running adjacent to the Twin Creek, and we occasionally stopped to admire the scenery. Along the way, we saw some Crepidotus mushrooms, which are oyster look-alikes, and an interesting plant. Uh, right over here, we actually got a distinct looking fruit. It's uh, the fruit of a jack in the pulpit, and Andrew's talked about it before, but it's always this bright red and it almost kind of makes me think of a giant raspberry or something. It almost looks like a pitcher plant, although it's not a carnivorous plant, but you can see these coming out in the late summer to early autumn. Edible? Uh, I don't think it's edible. A good <laughs> metric that we always use, if an animal hasn't eaten it, then you probably don't want to eat it. <laughs> Andrew looks like he just got out of the sauna or <laughs> His glasses are fogged up. <laughs> it's so hot. <laughs> By the way, if an animal does eat a berry, that's, of course, no guarantee that it's edible for us either. Further on the trail, we came across some more oddities. This has happened to us a few times. Oh, what is that? I don't know. How do people keep getting cars out here? I don't understand. What I wonder is if Maybe this used to be farmland before it was even forested. Yeah, maybe that's the answer because it's not that uncommon to see car stuff on the trail. But it's always really weird how they got them out here. But the forest might not have been here at the time. Anyways, I was gonna say, this has happened to us before, but whenever it rains on the first night of our trip, just the energy and verve is gone because you're soggy. <laughs> I was gonna say there's like parts of this hike today that have been just horrible because you're it's like dark and cloudy and you're hot and moist but then there's these like brief moments where the sun comes out and the breeze rolls through and it's really nice not enough of those moments though <laughs> despite the humidity and tiredness we continued hiking through the forest eventually we came upon a section where the forest floor was covered in periwinkle vines and dotted with stone sand bricks is this is a building or something at once at yeah, one time I don't know. This definitely looks like there was some sort of something here. Maybe there used to be a building here, like this could be like a fireplace or something. It's interesting because all these ivy vining plants on the ground are usually something you see in like someone's yard or in a suburban area. So I wonder if this did used to be like an old homestead right here. It would make sense. We're really close to the Old Mill Front Country Camp, so I wonder if this is referring to the Old Mill. Maybe not. Maybe we'll see another mill up further. <laughs> so this is a plant you would never see growing wild in a Midwestern forest. And I think it's more evidence that there used to be a homestead. It's got these 
really rough stringy leaves. It's related to agave and similar desert plants like that. You can actually use these fibers to like make string if you twist it enough until you get this like kink in the fibers. You grab onto it and you want to twist both these pieces in the same direction and they'll naturally twist. And you can see there there's like the beginnings of a rope and it just kind of naturally twists on itself like that. I've seen these growing like under signs and like cemeteries and things like that all, all around the Midwest. So I think this is another sign that this used to be some sort of a homestead or something like that. In fact, the other day we saw some of these non-native yuccas planted under the Kircher Community Park sign that we passed by. Now it was time to continue on. We crossed a wooden bridge and Brian spotted some interesting forest fruits. Actually on the ground here we've got uh, a half-eaten pawpaw it looks like. Obviously not fit for us anymore. Maybe we can find a pawpaw up in this tree that's actually ripe for us to eat. I'm obviously not going to eat this, but it does actually still smell really good. <laughs> yeah, still has that pawpaw smell. Oh, look at this. There's also a little buckeye nut here. It's been partly chewed open by something, but... This, of course, is Ohio's state nut. <laughs> <laughs> uh, state tree. Something's been gnawing on this, but it wasn't a human because these are poisonous to us, so... But they are really pretty. It's like they look like they're already varnished. Since we struck out yesterday, we decided to give these trees another shake. Oh! Oh, yeah! Alright, so we've got this pawpaw. It fell when I shook it, but it does smell pretty unripe, so... I'm just gonna cut into it and see. Yeah, I feel like this thing is still pretty underripe. Yeah, that's unfortunate. It fell for some reason, but it smells very green. <laughs> Yeah, there's these rows of seeds inside and all this white flesh eventually will turn more and more yellow. When I eat them, they're still, it's still kind of pale. Like, I kind of like it like that because it tastes custardy, but they'll turn even more orange and yellow as they ripen. And it's a really delicious fruit, but unfortunately this one's still premature. So I will toss it back for- um, We gotta try it at least. Are you gonna try it? Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll give it a bite just for the, I'll sacrifice my mouth. I mean, it'll probably be really hard, but you gotta at least know what the flavor is like. It's almost like nutty in a way. It's Brian's dry nothing. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't taste like too much. <laughs> but Man, that's disappointing. I feel like it does have kind of a nuttiness to it, but you know? No. <laughs> Back to the forest. <laughs> we also saw some orange mycena mushrooms. Up ahead, the path diverged into two, so we decided to explore a bit. There's something in this direction. There's like an archway. 14 acre tract of mature forest containing 300 species of plants. You wanna walk like slightly in? No. <laughs> <laughs> I decided to explore a little bit further just to check out the natural area. I'm curious to see if this area is at all different from what we've been hiking through. If it's got mature forest, then I expect some bigger trees, which I'm actually already seeing some here. But yeah, there's some, uh, some big walnuts and sycamores and other trees like that. While Andrew looked around, we settled in for a snack break. There wasn't much to see, so I soon rejoined the others. Today feels like the most summery day that has ever summered. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen to that. Now, we headed out, and Andrew spotted a plant that seemed out of place. But down here is actually a plant that a lot of people have growing in their yards. And there's a stalk here, which usually has flowers, but it's all bare right now. Uh, but this is called hosta. I feel like my parents used to always complain because the deer would always come by and eat the flowers. But they're not the only ones that can eat these. When these are younger and still kind of like a shoot coming out of the ground, humans can actually take them and cook them and eat them as well. I haven't tried it, but I've heard it tastes pretty good. I also saw some wild flocks growing nearby. Along the trail, we saw some wooden stairs that led down to a parking area. So the old mill campsite is up ahead. We can go through the forest, but this is a little bit of a shortcut, so we're gonna take this. Just walk on the road for a bit. The bright sun lifted our spirits as we walked on the road. We saw a green caterpillar as we walked, and we passed by where the trail would have led us if we hadn't taken this shortcut. 
We walked past some brown-eyed Susans and chicory flowers, and passed by an open meadow where we saw some sun-loving plants. So this is American pokeweed. Got the super bright looking magenta colored stem. There's a song called uh, Poke Salad that talks about cooking this up. And it's a toxic plant, so you have to boil it like multiple times and dra drain the water to eat it. It's kind of a depression era food. And these berries are actually used to make ink. Maybe I can demonstrate on the ground just how colorful they are. It's bright color. I don't want to stain my hands this time. <laughs> Now, the trail led us to the meadow we had passed by, taking us under a tall bridge. Before continuing on the Twin Valley Trail, we hiked up a wooden staircase for a little detour to a picnic area. Here we would have lunch and fill up on some much needed water. On the roadside, I saw more meadow plants to talk about. So these of course are milkweed and there's some milkweed pods growing right here. These are all edible, although right now they're a little late in the game. But these wouldn't be too good to eat because all the stuff inside is quickly turning into this fluff. Which, by the way, makes great tinder, but... I actually learned this very recently that you can find monarchs below the leaves. And little eggs. I'm not seeing any at the moment, but there is a grasshopper right here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can just see their little boop. And they just hang out there and then I guess they chrysalis or pupate or pupillate. I don't know. <laughs> so I've seen this growing all along the trail. It's called autumn olive. It's got these like red berries that are growing. And underneath the leaves, there's this really silvery color. The berries are also good to eat, but only when they're really overripe. Because if I eat this one right now, my mouth immediately dries out. It's super astringent. It feels like I swallowed a bunch of dust. <laughs> Fingers crossed that this is a nice cold water fountain and not one of those hot, baking in the sun, metallic water fountains. I'll go test this water with my dry mouth. <laughs> it started out hot and metallic, but then it got room temperature and slightly mass metallic. <laughs> While Robbie prepped some coffee, I made sure to wash my hands before preparing the food. What I'm preparing for lunch today is some charcuterie, because of course I am. So we've got some of these jerky sticks, sun-dried tomatoes, dried cherries, sharp white cheddar, maple butter almonds, sliced pepperoni, and some artichokes. I've only got this tiny wooden board to work with, but uh, I'm gonna try to make it work. The charcuterie board was prepared, and our coffee was percolating. It was time to indulge in our luxurious lunch. I'm sure I've asked this before, but why did you get into charcuterie? Don't why did it fascinate you so much? I think that's what my main question mm -hmm. I like the arranging of things. <laughs> <laughs> no. But I'm not sure, actually. <laughs> it was a good charcuterie. Mm -hmm. Get some pepperoni with that cheese. Mm. Now you're in luxury. <laughs> <laughs> well, and thank you to Shirley D for the coffee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These almonds are good. See, almonds can be good, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what are these prunes? Uh, cherries. I was about to say, what are you trying to do to me? <laughs> <laughs> Our hikes need more picnic tables like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, you can do so much with a surface. <laughs> 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 Coffee's overheating me a little. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, I'm charcuting in the nude. <laughs> <laughs> Here's some more cheese you can have in the breeze. These sun-dried tomatoes. Mm -hmm. mm. I love being dried in the sun. <laughs> this is the best part of the hike so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the only thing that can make this better is if this coffee were iced. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like I had just seen it on social media and I was like, this is actually easy to make. <laughs> oh. Oh, you know what it also was is uh, I found out Aldi had like good meats for cheap. <laughs> They had like those fancy meats, but it was pretty affordable. The afternoon rolled by. Refreshed and full of energy, we donned our packs and headed out. First stopping to check out a nearby landmark, the Valley Overlook. I imagine the view's nicer in the fall. <laughs> There's a nice Amanita mushroom here. Though. We now made our way back down the road, heading towards the meadow area we had come from. We continued hiking, basking in the open air and bright, warm sun. A bit up the way, we saw some construction equipment. It looks like they placed it there as like a statue, but I think they actually were doing construction there. Kind of looks like modern art. Wow, cool. I've never seen anything like this up close. Yeah. The trail now led us back into the woods, where it was a bit cooler and darker. Some of the trees were starting to turn yellow, and it seemed like the first flashes of autumn were touching the forest canopy. But if you looked just slightly in a different direction, summer still seemed to have a steady grasp on the woods. One thing I love about this place and this part kind of embodies it is just the trail has taken us through so many different looking places. We had wandered through forests, fields, towns, and farms, and now we were hiking across the Germantown Dam. came to a little parking area, which was the perfect place to stop and rest. If you guys want another break, I'm okay with that. <laughs> the weather's so perfect, we might as well. <laughs> okay, courtesy of one Pat. Oh, these. Oh man, we used to have a pantry full of these things. Oh really? And I used to eat them all the time as a kid. And back when I was a kid, I would not like these things, but now I feel good. <laughs> Tastes exactly like I remember. Mm -hmm. There's one more you want? Sure. My sister would say, he flakes, or hot flakes come from he flakes. <laughs> <laughs> well, the kind that I used to have, it was like little circular discs. Mm. And it was like in a tiny little firecracker package. Mm. Like it looked like a firecracker. Mm. Ours were oh, just yeah. like big rectangles, like kind of like fruit leather. Like these? Yeah. Yeah. I want some fruit leather? Mm. Yeah, why not? <laughs> The afternoon passed by, and we continued hiking into the woods. So, growing out of this dead log is a mushroom called crown tip coral fungus. It's got this super cool, delicate looking shape, and you can really clearly see why it's called that. And it's also edible. I really thought today would be a short day, but somehow <laughs> we've taken just as much time as we took yesterday. I think it's just we got an early start, but we still had a good amount to hike and I feel like we also took our time. We also took some ample breaks. We took our time today, that much is for sure. We came to a trail junction, which led us down into a valley. Then, we trudged back up a hill to another junction. 
This is the trail that we want to go on that heads towards the campsites. So. On the ground, we saw a cicada that had been afflicted by a parasitic fungus. They've got that white on their belly. It's some sort of fungus that, that infects them. We kept hiking and eventually came to yet another fork in the path, which pointed the way to our campsite, nestled amid a sunny meadow. Gateway to heaven or something. Yeah, it's beautiful, man. A lacy locust tree grew overhead, and tall grass swayed in the breeze below. We arrived at the campsite we had stayed at last time we were here and saw the familiar meadow we had relaxed in. Oh, yep, I do remember it now, yeah. Oh, last time it was all wet. <laughs> was it? Yeah. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. It was like a Van Gogh painting or something. Mmm. The old French countryside where we can enjoy more charcuterie. <laughs> Let's get to camp. This is where we camped last time. Yeah. Nice and roomy, too. Nice. Yeah, Whew. Great. As we set up camp, we were visited by Chris, originally one of our viewers, but over the years, now a good friend. I heard you all like cold water. <laughs> yes, <we> do. <laughs> yes. I totally took the, the cheating way here. Don't judge. Oh, hey, <laughs> no, no, no judgment. In a weird way, I know your sister. Uh, my wife's an artist at a at this big art center around oh, here, okay. uh -huh. and her one of her friends is another artist there. Oh, okay. And I was wearing that Adventure Archive T-shirt, and she said, "The two men in the," I was like, "So Robbie's not a man." <laughs> <laughs> Neither is Thomas, apparently. <laughs> I remember thinking like. This is Ray Mears, but they're Asian. <laughs> <laughs> That's the highest compliment someone could pay us. We continued setting up camp, then settled in to enjoy some snacks. All right, Brian, me, Brian. <laughs> Does it count that I'm already eating it? <laughs> <laughs> we jokingly call it hiker jerky because it's only sold at the gas station here. And that's where you always stop to get supplies right before you go in. Yeah, we saw these last night, and when I first saw it, I thought it was like some sort of weird cookie or like <laughs> some sort of like pressed chewing tobacco or something. <laughs> mm. I always go with teriyaki. Oh. Mm. It tastes um, good. It's good, yeah. yeah. Is it like some unheard of brand or something? I have no idea. I'm sure it's... It just looks like this. This is a homemade. Yeah. Oh, it just comes like it's, this. It's like in a plastic thing to the right of the register and you open up a little <laughs> Yeah, a puck of meat. <laughs> <laughs> meat puck. <laughs> <laughs> I brought stuff for tacos. Excellent. By tacos, I mean like pulled pork and a tomato and, like, you know, the kind of tacos that fit in your backpack. So it's like your neighbor's tomato? Yeah, uh, neighbor Mary came over this morning with some tomatoes and I thought, well, without the tomato, it was just going to be pork and tortillas. So, <laughs> so Mary made it tacos today. Thanks, Mary. So, like, I've always wanted to bring this, but it's a lot of food for one person. It smells really good. So, like... <laughs> Every raccoon in the world is gonna, <laughs> so you gotta eat it all. Like, we can't, no leftovers. So. After the meat was done heating up, yeah, sure we that. emptied it into the container. Ow, hot, hot, okay. <laughs> Check. Then, Andrew sliced up the garden tomato. We put together our delicious camping tacos. The sight and the smell of the meat was absolutely enticing. Wow, it's like tender, man. Come on, man. It was time to give in to our growling stomachs and eat. Dink! 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 Mmm. <laughs> mm. Wow. I feel that tomato has a lot. <laughs> no. His meat is so tender. Mm. Wow. This is Thank the... you. Mm, yeah. Thank neighbor Mary. Thank you so much. <laughs> and of course, none of these meat juices go to waste. Nope. This is a bad idea. I'll make a yeah. crab rangoon. More, more bowl shape. Maybe. <laughs> can you just like dip it? <laughs> yeah, I could do that too, I suppose. <laughs> that would have made more sense. One more time. 
Good. <laughs> okay, so Halloween is just around the corner. So I brought some candy. We also have some mochi. So what exactly is this? It's glutinous rice and it's beaten until it's like really jelly, okay. squishy consistency. And then on the inside, they put usually uh, red bean paste, which is a sweet bean paste. Okay. Uh, and the outside is just flour to keep it from being sticky. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Think, 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 think. Mm. Oh, it's got green tea filling. Mm -hmm. mm. That's really good. So is this considered like candy? Like a snack, like a dessert. basically. Yeah, like okay. a dessert okay. snack. Yeah. Because that's definitely it. like filling. It's yeah. not just, you know. All right. Of the two candy bars, which one's the better one? Twix. Twix. No, no. go Snickers. Oh, really? No. Oh, I go Twix. But... Oh. Mm. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> What's the line in the Seinfeld episode? He's like, oh no, that's just a little bit of nougat. <laughs> oh, <right>. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> and the Twix is the only candy bar with the cookie crunch. <laughs> After dinner, Chris went to get a few supplies from his car while we sat in the nearby meadow to watch the golden sun slowly set. We watched as songbirds soared, silhouetted against the glowing amber sky. Relaxing in this meadow made it all the clearer that you don't always need to visit a Yellowstone or a Yosemite to have a profound experience in nature. Sometimes you just need a sunset, a beautiful meadow, and the sounds of nature all around you. Uh, this trip kind of reminds me of our like our classic trips from like years ago. Maybe it's just like the fact that we had that like little interlude. I love the variety that we got yeah. in this. Sometimes it's really nice to refresh in civilization, but then not have to stay there. Mm, yeah, <laughs> this does really remind me of like childhood days spent riding around your neighborhood on a bike or something. Cause mm. like it's just this classic Ohio landscape, and like the sights and the smells and the sounds are all like when you're a kid on summer break. Yeah. And then we had such a turnaround from the weather. If we had to think about <laughs> more rain today, I think we would have just tapped out. Yeah. It's funny that interlude we had, like just having a table and a source of water to, where, to like wash your things out. Mm -hmm. It's such a luxury when you don't have that otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> I think this trail really embodies the kind of balance that I strive for in life because Sometimes you want that raw wilderness experience, especially when you've been like stuck in the city. But I feel like in my daily life, I want to have this balance between like civilization, but also the outdoors. Yeah, this trip kind of feels like the ones that I yearn for when I'm really starting to like really itching to get outdoors, but I don't have like a lot of time to commit to it. And I just want to be like, oh man, if I could just go somewhere and just spend like one or two nights outside, but it's something not too far or not too difficult. This camping trip really has that feel. Even when you can't go on a long backpacking trip, it's important to take some time to be present and really experience the wonders of everyday life. The songs of the birds, the colors of the setting sun, the feeling of a cool breeze in your hair, or the shining stars in the night sky above. moments like these that help us step away from going through life on autopilot, that help us remember the wonder that exists in the universe. The 
next day, we were treated to a bright, sunny morning. As we packed our gear away and freshened ourselves up, we talked about how we had slept. I actually slept a lot better than I did the night before. Same. <laughs> it wasn't as wet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think what helped is I had an air mat so I didn't have to <laughs> crawl myself around the roots in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, I didn't get too cold, but it definitely got cool last night. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys hear the, there's like a deer or something over here? Inevitably, almost every night, I always wake up and I hear stuff and I'm like, is that an animal? Uh -oh. Like there's been literally times I've been hanging in my hammock, clearly like something growling out there. And then I realize it's like the rubbing of my sleeping mat against like my hammock or something. And I'm like, oh, nope. <laughs> All right, let's get this tent back up. We tore down the rest of our campsite then grabbed our bags and headed out. On the way out, Andrew saw some plants growing in the hedges by the meadow. So there's a few fruiting trees and plants around here. Uh, this is actually a mulberry tree. None of this stuff is in season, so don't get too excited. But yeah, this is a mulberry tree. Usually there's like these black little berries that grow on it. And then here are some raspberry canes. And uh, they're kind of thorny, but other than that, the stem is actually smooth and it has this milky powder on it. And then this is a grapevine, and this leaf has all these like insect galls growing on it. So I think what happens is some sort of a bug injects eggs into that leaf and then kind of mutates it and turns it into like a, a sack for the baby bugs. But don't quote me on that. <laughs> so you do have to be careful walking through the woods sometimes because like right here there's an ash sapling growing and if you were curious about it you might not realize that just next to it is a bunch of poison ivy. <laughs> and you can even see the little white berries growing here. And this stuff is just like thick and reaching right out into the path. Interestingly, the berries are actually, for certain species, edible. I've seen like cardinals feasting on these berries before, but obviously for humans, you don't want to do that. Well, I'm never going to be able to identify poison ivy, because if this is poison ivy, I literally have no clue what poison ivy is supposed to look like. That's what's especially deceptive, is like a lot of these leaves are smooth, when poison ivy usually has these like lobes or, or sharper parts, and you can kind of see some of that right here. Like you can see that it has a lobe here, but most of these don't look like how you usually think of poison ivy. Also growing nearby was Queen Anne's lace and some goldenrod. Found some puffballs here. I know of several different kind of puffballs, pear-shaped puffball, pigskin puffball, and I'm not sure which this one is. I want to say it's a pigskin puffball. So you can see it's perfectly white. If it was changing color, like yellow or brownish color, that means it was already going bad. Probably this one, we can cut it up and it's probably black. We'll let Andrew clarify my diagnosis. <laughs> <laughs> Wolf fart is actually the translation of the genus, Lycoperdon. These were Lycoperdon courtesy. Now, it was back into the woods. Up ahead, we came to a junction in the trail. And here, I saw another plant. So growing right here are some elderberry bushes. And they don't have any of the flower clusters or berries right now, but I can always tell just because of how the leaves are and the fact that they grow oppositely. And... But yeah, elderberry is a great source of like vitamins and minerals, I assume. <laughs> but you can uh, obviously eat the berries, but also you can take the flower clusters and eat those too. I've seen people like batter them up and fry them like fritters. So on the map, this says Old Forest. Can you tell the difference, Andrew, and what would be the difference? Well, I feel like immediately I started seeing more of these big trees and the forest floor seemed to clear out a bit. A little bit back on the trail, there was a bunch of invasive honeysuckle and stuff, and now the forest floor is pretty open and clear. But other than that, it's, it, it is a little hard to tell the difference. Yeah, I guess these trees are quite a bit bigger. Yeah, it just feels like a more welcoming, open kind of forest environment, to me at least. We continued hiking, and on the other side of the gully, we could see the wooden deck of the park's nature center. I also saw an interesting plant. So growing here is this vining plant. It's growing around some of these other shrubs. It's got these really smooth margined leaves. A lot of people list this as like a look-alike of grapevine. They actually don't look that similar, but there's a good reason for it because this vine has fruits that are poisonous, and it's called moon seed, because if you open up the fruit and pull out the seed, it looks like a little crescent moon. Moon seed. What a time to be alive. Just before getting to the visitor center, we passed a stream with some familiar looking rocks. 
in Columbus, there's some metro parks that have similar looking streams, but up there, I think it's like Olentangy Shale. This almost looks like limestone to me, but... As we examined the creek bed, we noticed a little green frog sitting in the water. So this way is to the nature center. Man, Thomas is missing out. We're gonna have access to a full-on restroom. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Thomas, I will use it in your stead. <laughs> we arrived at the nature center, which was a bit surreal to take in. We've gone across a street under bridges, now to a normal Metro Park nature center. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we are Adirondacking it up, man. <laughs> Oh, this one doesn't rock. Feels nice. <laughs> this is a good end. <laughs> I feel like we've been through an entire lifetime of journeying. <laughs> when you do a metro park, you, you expect most of the trail to just be like this. Yeah, yeah. But, man, we've gone through so many different landscapes. Yeah, I didn't expect this kind of rigorousness from the... Yeah. Rigorousness. <laughs> Rigorosity. <laughs> I'm about to test the rigors of that bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wonder why only two of them are rocking chairs. You guys got the sad boy, no rock. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about your luck. We can tag out if you want. <laughs> we milled about for just a little bit longer, enjoying the sunny weather. Once it was time to head out, we'd be leaving our packs with Chris, then hiking back to our car at the trailhead. But we weren't in any big rush to get going. You gonna be okay here? I think I'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, I can handle this. <laughs> Enjoy that rocking chair. Yeah, I'll, uh, <laughs> cool. fun. See you around. <laughs> yeah. We had hiked miles in the past couple of days, through forests, across fields, under bridges, on the street, in neighborhoods, and along the winding Twin Creek. We felt lucky to be able to experience such a unique pocket of nature in the middle of Ohio. Sure, it wasn't the Rocky Mountains or the Alaskan wilderness, but in a way, that's what made this place so unique. Before long, our journey was at its end, and we saw the parking area through the trees. We are back. Oh, yeah. But hiking out of the woods, we felt more balanced, ready to return to civilization but without losing sight of the special moments and the beautiful nature that surround us every single day. Still here. Yep. Let's go eat some pizza. <laughs> yeah. Captain Nines. Captain Nines. Are we getting taco pizza? Uh, we should get a taco pizza among others.
I didn't get you got Oh, okay. Oh, you're in a mood today. <laughs> I am in a mood. Start eating, start eating. <laughs> I, our pizza's here and you're making us do this stupid thing. Come on, man. Just <laughs> <laughs> turn this Will your mouth. <laughs> Will your mouth. <laughs> Put this one in front of me though. I want this one. I'll just put yeah, it on. this is stupid, Andrew. <laughs> it's really what is this? Hawaiian? <laughs> Hawaiian and garlic. This is Terry. Everybody take the top off of one and then you can use that as a plate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, while well, you guys are busy doing that. <laughs> there we go. Those old people that sit around here. Mm. They're the ones who told me to try the pepperoni and onion. Like we come here every week. Oh really? This is our favorite. Now taco pizza is pretty good because it's got the fresh veggies on it. <clears throat> Teriyaki was better than expected. Thank you for joining us, Chris. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It kind of tastes like Chinese food. Is pizza the perfect food? Yes. <laughs> you get the right thing on it, it's pretty balanced. Mm -hmm. John Carmack, the creator of Doom, proclaimed that it was. Next time, if we ever hike here again, when we stay at this campsite. Gonna have dinner here. No. Huh. Walk we down could, in here. We could plan it ahead that I could meet you there. And you would be the pizza delivery guy. <laughs> I'll, have, I'll have my wife drop me off at the bridge. I guess that would just be we've a hike the, meal. Yeah, we've had the post hike meal, the pre hike meal. But there exists a fabled mid hike meal. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure it out. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Thanks for the pizza. Oh man. My pleasure. Good. I'm gonna. Be home in 20 minutes while you guys got some driving to do. <laughs> Let's go. Hi, right, Chris. Yeah, it's been real. It's been like to meet home. Thomas sometime. <laughs> someday, someday. Yeah, Thomas and him. <laughs> awesome, you guys take care. All right, see you, man. Think so, Ryan. You think you got everything besides your spirit, <laughs> which you left somewhere on the trail? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it's been fun. I'll see you guys soon. All right, man. See you around. Drive. I'll, I'll, I'll spoon you from uh, Thomas's potluck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed the episode. Extra special thanks to our patrons at patreon.com slash adventure. These episodes take a long time to make and it's thanks to our patrons that we're even able to make them at all. If you enjoyed the original music from this episode, you can check that out at adventurearchives.bandcamp.com. We have t-shirts for sale in the link below. And if you really enjoyed the episode, consider checking out our Patreon community at patreon.com slash adventure. Patrons get to watch the episode a little bit early. There's exclusive bloopers and commentaries and some other fun stuff. But anyways, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Choose your character. Kevin Rock, James Rokitsky. Douglas Jax, Salvador Gonzalez. William Garnett. Dan Vulcans. Well, I don't believe you one bit. You got that? You tricked us. You kidnapped us. Player 218, Elaine Nare Anthony, Sonja, Andrew, Jason, Brody, Ray, Davis, Jerry Gold, Bechil, Evil Macky. 실제로 악하지는 않습니다. 실제로 매우 좋습니다. 118, Suaton, 시원한 곳에 사는 멋진 사람들. 322, J. 
제이 레이문도 스턴트맨 실제로 중국에서 온 것은 아닙니다. 119 브라이언과 어시 야마가타 새로 온 사람들 환영하다 456 제이슨 부르주아 호지 AA 슈퍼팬 가볍게 여겨서는 안됩니다. 플레이어 369 황순잔 동생보다 존경스럽습니다. What exactly is the price? 랍스터 この番組はエクスペディションリサーチLLCブルースとエリースフィリップスアクヤジアサレの提供でお送りします。Nearly a decade ago, Chairman Aaron Jones' fantasy became a reality in a form never seen before, Kitchen Stadium, a giant cooking arena. He wanted to encounter new artistic cuisines. To realize his dreams, he chose the top chefs of various styles of cooking and named them the Iron Chefs. Iron Chef Japanese is Anne McBride. Iron Chef Chinese is Mary Sincavage. Iron Chef French is Christina Alvarez. And if ever a challenger wins over the Iron Chef, he or she will gain the people's ovation and fame forever. Hi everyone, I'm Robbie from Adventure Archives. Special shout out to everyone at GreatLakesWatercraft.com. Memory serves me right. A French chef once told me that wild mushrooms should be cooked immediately in butter so that you can experience its rich, musty aroma, unhindered by other flavors. That's why today's special ingredient is... Kinoko! Ryan-san. Yes, Katya, go ahead. We got a chance to talk to the Iron Chef on the kitchen floor about how he's using these mushrooms. So I'm gonna be incorporating these chanterelles into a creamy noodle dish. I hope it makes the judges feel as nostalgic as I do. Ha 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 ha. And now the cooking is done, and we're gonna go to our judges, Leon and Lou to hear what they have to say about the dishes. Up first is Iron Chef Anne McBride's dish. Hmm, the first bite was okay. At first, I didn't really like it, but for some reason, I kept going and I finished it. The taste really brings me back to my childhood. Next is challenger John Truitt's dish. Hmm, <laughs> delicious. These noodles are very good and creamy and the acidity of the tomato really highlights the savoriness of the cream. But I can't help but notice that a lot of the oil and vegetable flavors cover up the flavor of the wild mushrooms. Tonight's winner is... Iron Chef Anne McBride. Thank you so much. The challenger was a worthy opponent. And uh, I wasn't sure I was gonna make it through, to be honest. But I'm glad I did, ha ha ha. Richard Frangiamore. Hi, I'm Robbie again. Special shout out from Rocco to his girlfriend Lynn. See you later. <laughs> there was that time that you thought there was a wolf or something. You were sleeping and you were like dreaming. Oh, where I I dreamt that I dreamt that something bit me through my hammock and it woke me up. I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> like me and Andrew were still awake or something. And then you were like, oh, did you guys see that? And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs>